25th year. The following is a special presentation of HBO Sports. On April 12th, two champions go head-to-head -head in the biggest welterweight title fight since Sugar Ray Leonard first met Thomas Hearns 16 years ago. I'll do whatever it takes to win that fight. Good short left hook by De La Hoya. Burnell greets him with that left hand inside. This kid has never had a super fight. Dude, I want to keep him in there and take him into those rounds he's never seen before. I don't think I've ever seen Burnell punch harder. Can he at his age sustain it for four more rounds? Okay. Oh, what a left hand by Whitaker. Burnell Whitaker lifts up dramatically. Not only changed his game, go, go, he's raised his game. some iron and lead in those gloves. Hello, I'm Jim Lampley, along with my HBO boxing commentary colleagues, Larry Merchant and Roy Jones. We welcome you to this special look ahead toward the biggest welterweight fight in 16 years since the young Ray Leonard met the young Thomas Hearns. When Oscar De La Hoya and Pernell Whitaker enter the ring in Las Vegas April 12th, both will redefine careers which began with Olympic glory. And there to watch at ringside will be another great Olympian, Roy Jones. Roy, what excites you about this fight? Well, Jim, you have two guys who have virtually rose to the top of their game. Both guys are at their peaks right now. One is on the way up still, the other is on the way down. And they're in the same lane. So somebody has to be moved aside. I don't know who it will be yet. There's so much controversy involved and you can't just look at this fight on paper and say, well, this guy's going to win. That's what's so good about boxing. A natural confrontation here. That doesn't always happen, Larry, in the convoluted business of boxing. In the modern age of boxing, Jim, there are so many bogus champions who don't want to meet each other. These fellows define themselves as champions because they want to test themselves against themselves, the best out there. Indeed. Aside from more than $15 million, what is the fight all about? Well, this is about a golden boy who has done nothing wrong in his quest for 24-karat greatness versus a golden man who has done everything right during a remarkable career, beating all comers at all weights. It promises to be one of those rare golden moments when great expectations may be exceeded, Jim. Well said. And when great expectations are exceeded, that happens when great fighters exceed them. Brunel Whitaker's greatness in the ring has been visible for 12 years. Ever since he was the most polished product of the star-studded 1984 Olympic team, that included Mark Breland, Terrell Biggs, Evander Holyfield, Meldrick Taylor, and Virgil Hill. No active champion has accomplished more than Whitaker, and yet his manager and co-trainer Lou Duva identifies De La Hoya as a crossroads fight for Sweet Pea. At this stage of the career, uh, in his career, this is the biggest fight because it's a crossroads fight for him, you know? He loses, what does he do? He must prove that the 12 years that he's been a professional at one of Luke. If they think one fight will define 12 years of excellency, then somebody should be fired. It'll bother me if they let this fight right here dignify my career. Despite everything Pernell Whitaker has accomplished, there is an undercurrent of concern in his training camp. A sense that at age 33, 
Whitaker loses everything if he loses to Oscar De La Hoya. The fighter himself disagrees, insisting his career stands on its merits up to now. He states the case the way he has fought for the most part, defensively. I have done everything, winning a gold medal, turning professional, winning six world titles, winning fight of the year, proclaimed the best fighter pound for pound. So there's nothing else to be proved. Whitaker is right, but his performances in the past two years argue against him. Against less than world-class opposition, Sweet Pea has looked slow, out of shape. More shockingly, the once unhittable Dipsy Doo defender has been tagged by a journeyman and a rookie. The persistent rumor in the boxing world is that Pernell Whitaker parties harder than he trains. If I partied that much, I would look old. And, it, and, and looking into that camera, the, media, the whole immediate world looking at me can sense that I do not look 33 years old. I don't do no more than the next man. I don't throw parties. You know, I don't go to parties. I don't sit in people's houses. So where are you seeing me at all these places? And where is the party? <laughs> okay, so maybe it isn't the partying. But has age alone been enough to change the way Purnell fights? I know I'm not as quick as I used to be. So I have to make up with it by using my head and not getting hit with anything. You know, I knew when I was younger I wouldn't get hit with anything. And I really wasn't thinking that much. But now that I'm doing more thinking in there and positioning myself so that when the guy misses, I can make him pay, that's the big change. A change that paid dividends when a seemingly unmotivated Whitaker had his problems against Wilfredo Rivera in their first meeting and then needed a victory in their rematch last September. And in his very next fight against unknown Diabele Furcado, Rennell again showed up unprepared and needed an 11th round come from behind knockout to preserve this meeting with De La Hoya. Yes, he had a hard time motivating himself. It's very hard for a guy in Pernell Whitaker's caliber to take a guy that he's never seen before, that he's never heard of before. So how good can a guy be? It was very frustrating to jump in, in there and fight uh, ordinary fighters. And I'm the one who keeps stepping in the ring with everything to lose and nothing to gain out of fighting these guys. So when it was officially announced Whitaker would fight De La Hoya, the sweet pea of Purnell's youth seemed to flower again. This is the super fight Whitaker's camp has been seeking ever since Purnell was robbed of victory after beating up Julio Cesar Chavez. The feeling that I had when I fought Chavez is the same feeling I have right today. I've missed this feeling for now three years, and that's what this fight is all about. Once you get a challenge, and once you get a fight like this and with this magnitude, of course you try to you go dig down deep. They built Chavez to be this unbeatable, unbreakable monster. What he get? Same thing that Oscar De La Hoya is going to get. A good spanking. In big fights, Whitaker has always risen to the occasion. The fact that this one comes near the end of his career, and he goes in as the underdog, brings to mind what his good friend Evander Holyfield faced when he knocked out Mike Tyson. Evander didn't need to come in there with the ordinary fight and take a chance of not looking at his best. In order to bring the best out you, you have to fight the best. When that happened, he gave me inspiration. And I, and I said to him, I said, Pete, now how do you think you're gonna do with De La Hoya? Oh man, he says, watch, just watch. See what, see what Evander did? Yeah, watch me with De La Hoya. For now, they watch him in training. When April 12 arrives, he will have been in camp 10 weeks, one of the longest of his career. And he's sparring with hard punchers, Mark Breland, Vernon Forrest, Ivan Robinson, and Fernando Vargas. I'm more motivated, more focused. Plus, I'm working harder. I'm gonna show some of that 84 flavor, and I'm gonna show some of that early, early professional flavor, and then I'm gonna show some of the maturity of the older Pernell with it. All those lined up in one. He may need all that and more. Whitaker's entourage clings to the gospel that a big fight will again bring out the best in the fighter. And the aging champion repeats the mantra. If this is my last fight. It's going to be the greatest fight people ever see. I'm flat out. It's going to be the best performance that boxing fans have ever seen. Larry, what's your take on the language of Pernell Whitaker's training camp? My take is that Pernell Whitaker is about 100,000% right 
that his reputation is De La Hoya proof. Azuma Nelson, one of the best fighters of his time, could scarcely lay a glove on him in their match. Julio Cesar Chavez didn't want any part of Whitaker in a rematch after their infamous draw. Pinnell Whitaker's record is indelible. Should he lose, just as the old Armstrong lost to the young Robinson, as Lewis lost to Marciano and Ali to Holmes, he, like they, will still be great. As for his lifestyle, Whitaker could have gone to bed every night at nine and drank nothing but orange juice, and he'd still be 33 years old. Though many veteran champions have had memorable fights, none of them has been as good as they were in their primes. All long-time champions need serious challenges to bring out the best they still have left. And Pernell Whitaker has that in De La Hoya. Question. Whitaker's last three fights coming into this matchup are not unlike Evander Holyfield's last three fight fights prior to his sudden resurrection against Mike Tyson. But isn't the miracle resurrection trick a little bit easier for a heavyweight like Holyfield than for a man like Whitaker who's had to make weight all his life? I think it was easier for Holyfield because he was fighting a one-dimensional opponent who himself was past his peak. Whitaker is fighting a fighter just coming in to his best years. Roy, uh, Purnell Whitaker was down twice on knockdowns and slipped down another three times in his last fight against Diabelis Hurtado. Does he have the legs left to fight a puncher like De La Hoya? Yeah, Jim, I think he has the legs left. It's just that sometimes when you don't estimate a guy to be what he really is or when you underestimate people, you go in and you don't prepare yourself quite as well as you do when you know you have a tough fight. This time, you won't see any of those slips because Pernell Whitaker would be in top condition. All right, let's shift the focus from age 33 to age 24. There were any number of ways that Oscar De La Hoya could have made a large fortune in 1997. He's blessed with a constant catalog of name value opponents that some other champions can only envy. No one would have blamed De La Hoya if in his first full welterweight fight, he had chosen some opponent other than the best in the division. But Oscar wanted Whitaker. It could be a brave and intelligent choice, or it could be too ambitious. I feel that my career right now is barely starting. You know, after four years of professional boxing, after 23 fights, this fight here, it's barely starting. This is where, like, I come out, you know, this is where people get to know me in this fight here. And uh, it's just the beginning. For the record, the beginning was in 1992, when Oscar De La Hoya won Olympic gold and began his unbeaten professional career. Beating Pernell Whitaker would give him a claim to the title of best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. But losing could expose him as a pretty face who got too ambitious trying to keep up with his skyrocketing image. I'm trying to climb up this ladder, and I'm, 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 uh, I finished the first step, now I'm going up to the second step. And uh, Pernell Whitaker is, is that first challenge, you know, the, the toughest challenge in that weight class. So, um, you know, in a way, I feel it's going to be like my first fight. <laughs> Though he's the one moving up from 140 to 147 pounds, Oscar is the heavy favorite to defeat Whitaker. One big question, will De La Hoya's superior punching power travel up the scale with him, or will he have to be more of a boxer? Now that I'm going up to 147 pounds, I feel stronger. And with being stronger, I feel uh, confident mentally because when I was fighting at 140, it was getting tough for me to make the weight. And now that I'm stepping up a notch, I feel I will have a, um, a stronger punch and a faster punch. The man responsible for making sure De La Hoya has that stronger and faster punch is his trainer of only one year, Jesus Rivero, the 66-year-old sage whom Oscar affectionately calls the professor. Rivera disputes the notion that power is critical. But in any... He will have the power, but the change will consist of being faster. To win over Whitaker, the most important thing to have is the speed, not the power. The only way to win over a fast opponent is with speed. Whitaker has won over his opponents with his speed, and I think that Oscar is going to be faster than Whitaker. De La Hoya may have been looking ahead to Whitaker, even as he was decisioning the super tough Miguel Angel Gonzalez in his last fight in January. When I took the Gonzalez fight, um, even though he was 41-0 and, and the number one contender and ex-world champion, um, I took him lightly. 
Whereas Gonzalez becomes the aggressor, dispenses with the jab, and throws power punch lead, he starts to get affected. Those tuna fights there can really hurt you. Oscar's victory over Gonzalez raised a troublesome question. Where was the right hand? A punch that De La Hoya seemingly couldn't or wouldn't throw. Now people think that Oscar doesn't have a good right or that he doesn't know how to use it. Many people thought that his right hand was injured, but that was not true. I think that the less he shows what he knows to people, the better. So De La Hoya may have underestimated his last opponent. Maybe he even hid a part of his arsenal. That doesn't mean that beating Pernell Whitaker will be easy. I know Pernell Whitaker is going is to be in the best shape of his life, uh, like no other fight, because he wants to win this fight. I mean, imagine if he wins this fight, if he beats me, um, uh, what kind of reputation he'll have. I mean, he'll be like the only one to beat me, so I'm not going to let him do that. The Mexican-American fighter emerges now from two years of fighting mostly Mexican opponents. In a way, that's a relief. And having thoroughly dominated the once great Julio Cesar Chavez, De La Hoya uses him now for motivation. Renal Whitaker, in my eyes, he beat Chavez, you know, without a doubt. I want to win this fight because I'm getting revenge for Chavez. If I beat Whitaker, it's like, if, um, you know, I'm, it's like, I mean, I am beating the very best. And it's, it is kind of like passing the torch, you know. Whitaker had his days, now it's time for another fighter. Oscar De La Hoya believes it is his turn to carry that torch and that his grip will only grow tighter in future years. I still have three, four, five more years of learning. You know, that's, that's what's, uh, what's going to surprise people in the future because I'm not at my peak. I'm not even close to my peak. I think I need uh, um, four years or five years to be right at where I want to be. And I think that that's, uh, that's pretty scary, isn't it? Oscar De La Hoya wants April 12 to be remembered as just the beginning. But if he loses, he could be remembered as just another pretty face who had a golden opportunity to step forward, but went too far too fast, trying to keep up with his golden boy identity. Larry, your response to that De La Hoya feature? Well, one thing that comes through, I think, is that De La Hoya may have an advantage because he has that youthful conviction that this is the most important fight of his life. As important as it is, too, to Pernell Whitaker, he's been there and done that more than once. Regarding the notion that a defeat would destroy De La Hoya, a pretty face named Ali lost his first fight to Fraser. Another pretty face named Leonard lost his first fight to Duran. Both survived and thrived because what happens to you doesn't matter as much as what you do next. As I alluded to in the piece, De La Hoya would have caught no flack if he had chosen another fight first as he moved up in weight. Why is he fighting Pernell Whitaker? This is the right time for this kind of fight for De La Hoya. He's fighting a great fighter with a great name who is past his best, who is basically at his best when he was a lightweight. He is not a really strong man. A terrific fight for De La Hoya to show what he has. Roy, on paper, there's a big change here. Oscar is accustomed to fighting smaller guys who are coming up in weight to meet him for his marketing power. He built his whole career that way. Is Whitaker big enough to make Oscar feel smaller in there, or is this going to be more of the same for De La Hoya? Well, Jim, I think it's going to be more of the same. The reason is because Oscar is a big guy. Oscar is not a small kid. Oscar should really be a welterweight. I think his best weight class is going to be the welterweight division. Whitaker, however, is really a lightweight. He's just matured so much until he's learned to tote the weight, and he's been all the way up to 154. But his best weight was 135. And all that figures into some of the style elements we could see. All big fights offer intriguing style contrasts. This one much more than most. Southpaw versus conventional stance. Boxer versus boxer puncher. Lateral movement versus up the middle power. Roy Jones looks beyond the surface of all that to some of the subtle nuances that could decide the fight. <laughs> I'm not going to get a kid any credit. 
You know, I don't know his strong points. It's not my job to give him any credit. I'm gonna give him the fight of his life because I'm not gonna let him off that easy. His weakness is he wake up every morning thinking that he has to fight me. Just because he's considered to be one of the best pound for pound, I'm not gonna take it easy. I'm gonna go in there and try to knock him out. I won't be caught up in a brawl. I don't, I don't want to get into a, to a situation where both of us are punching and nobody's stopping. What I have to do is beat him at, at his own game plan. Um, if he gets in a brawl with me, He'll probably be thinking, you know, it's, it's a big mistake, first of all, because, uh, you know, he's really not a strong puncher. What I try to do is make the kid fight the way I want him to fight. And once you got a guy boxing the way you, you want him to box, then you're in control. I'm going to go out there and put the pressure. That's the way this fight is going to be. <laughs> you heard what both men had to say and the way they plan to fight this fight. However, we know that in professional boxing, it is much easier to say these things than it is to do them. If I were preparing for a fight with such magnitude, this is the way that I would prepare myself. Here to help me give a demonstration is my good friend Derek Smoke Ganner. He's a southpaw like Sweet P. Whitaker. For Whitaker to be effective, he needs to take his lead foot, place it outside of De La Hoya's lead foot, lead with the left hand. Boom. That lines up his strongest punch as a southpaw, which should be his left hand. That was a knockdown. It also offsets De La Hoya's strongest punch as a right-hander, which should be his right hand. When De La Hoya goes to catch up with Whitaker, he should run right into Whitaker's right hook. This should be very effective in the early part of the fight. The other thing that should be frustrating to Oscar is Whitaker's defense. Whitaker likes to get real low and bob and weave under punches. He bobs under Oscar's big punches, comes up, boom, 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 with three and four shots. That will frustrate Oscar. That should be the key for Whitaker to win the fight. For Oscar to be successful, he needs to use lateral movement against Pernell Whitaker. When you use lateral movement and make him follow you, Whitaker likes to pick his right foot about this high off the floor. So every time Oscar goes left or right, Whitaker will pick that right foot up about that high off the floor and put the heel down first. From the time that foot leaves the floor until that heel touches, he has no balance. And Hurtado plants Whitaker on his butt. Being that he's the shorter fighter, Oscar should be able to just push him and make Whitaker fall off balance. Another thing Oscar should do is because Whitaker likes to carry his right hand so low is use his jab effectively. <laughs> that keeps Whitaker's right hand from doing anything. That neutralizes one of Whitaker's hands. He's taller because of the jabs, just, even if he just jabs his shoulder, there's nothing Whitaker should be able to do and that should make it easy for Oscar to outpoint Whitaker. So I want to keep him in there and take him into those rounds he's never seen before. And I'm going to pound him up. I'm not going to run from him. I'm not going to go out there and just try to box him. If he wants to fight me, I'm going to fight him. Oscar should come out early throwing blistering punches, combinations after combinations, trying to put Whitaker away. And if he's lucky, he may do just that. Whitaker, on the other hand, has a lot of frustration built up inside of him, mainly from the draw with Julio Cesar Chavez. Whitaker wants to prove that he is the junior welter and the welterweight king. He is going to show Oscar a lot of side to side head movement. He's going to counter Oscar and he's going to fake at Oscar a lot. These are things that Oscar has never seen before. Both men are superb fighters. However, whomever can carry out their strategic plan the best should be the one of this fight. Great piece. And at the risk of gilding the lily, Larry, what's your take on the give and take of strategy? Well, when it comes to strategy, Jim, I'm just a passenger. While Roy goes under the hood and knows all about those wires and gaskets, I do have a couple of observations. Whitaker took away Chavez's best punch to the body and wound up driving him back, which no one had seen before. So I suspect he'll try to neutralize Delahoya's more versatile left with frustrating movement and engage him late in the fight, toe to toe. De La Hoya will try to set up his left hook and use his right more than we have seen recently. 
whatever the strategy, fights like this are usually decided by what's deep inside the hood. Power, quickness, toughness. And let's talk about some of those elements with Roy. Roy, uh, Oscar De La Hoya is a natural puncher who is constantly getting better as a boxer. Pernell Whitaker is a great boxer who in recent years has begun to punch a little bit harder. Is this going to be a boxing match or a punching match? Uh, Jim, I definitely think it has to be a boxing match. Reason being is because Whitaker doesn't go in the ring to knock you out with one punch. He goes in to accumulate blows, wear you down, then knock you out. De La Hoya does go in the ring to kind of knock you out with one punch, but he's fighting the most elusive fighter in the last 10 years. Which fighter is likely to be most surprised by what will happen in the early rounds? You know, I, I can't say either fighter would be surprised. Whitaker knows that De La Hoya is a punching heart throb. You know, he throws bombs. He drops bombs from everywhere. De La Hoya also knows that Whitaker is not the easiest person to hit. So I don't think either fighter would be surprised unless De La Hoya is surprised by Whitaker's power. We saw De La Hoya trying to take Gonzalez's head off with the jab. Does Whitaker's southpaw stance automatically neutralize that? Uh, no, because Whitaker is shorter than De La Hoya. So De La Hoya should also try to take Whitaker's head off with the jab. He'll be able to reach Whitaker a lot easier than Whitaker can reach him. And what's your strategy for erasing the distasteful aftermath of your disqualification against Montel Griffin? Well, you know, I don't, I don't sit back and harp on stuff like that, you know, but I think we are drawing close to a rematch, and in the rematch, people will see again why I'm the best fighter pound for pound, because I went in, did what I had to do, the fight went perfect to plan as I had subscribed it, and I think the fight will go perfect to my subscription again. In the meantime, we'll look forward to being with you at ringside on the evening of April 12th. Thank you, and I look forward to being there with you guys. Larry, your closing comment on Whitaker De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya is favored logically because he's younger and stronger. Pernell Whitaker is the underdog logically because he was at his best as a lightweight five, six years and 10 or 12 pounds ago. But when was the last time that logic prevailed in a big fight? Bo Galata one and two, Tyson Holyfield, Junior Jones Barrera, Roy Jones Griffin, Lewis McCall, what I'm hoping for is a rematch of Whitaker De La Hoya because the first one was so good. Certainly as intriguing a fight as the 90s have produced so far, you might have to go back even farther than that to find the proper comparison. We look forward to having you with us and enjoying the boxing match live on pay-per-view from Las Vegas the evening of April 12. For Larry Merchant and Roy Jones, so long. celebrating 25 years as the network of champions. This has been a presentation of HBO's